Good afternoon. My name is Alan Williams, and I would like to recall a special meeting I attended with the Board of Directors of Dawasco in Roseau Dominica on Thursday, December 15, 2016, at 1.10 p.m. Mr. Atherton Martin and myself were representing the Caribbean Water Transshipment Company, and our task had been to seek to engage the Wasco in Dominica in the prospects of selling fresh water to Caribbean island destinations. The following pictures are from that discourse with recognizable the Wasco board members. Fortunately for me, this was the second time that our company was being accommodated by members of this board within a two-week span. The first meeting was conducted by Mr. Marte on December 6th because I could not get a flight in on time. Knowing that the few members who were courteous enough to attend again had heard our pitch, I decided to take a different angle. My opening remarks was that I was not there to request that they join us in selling some of Dominica's freshwater surface supplies to neighboring islands. More than that, I was there to demonstrate to them how this utility can build up its revenue potential in order to be able to undertake the huge task of financing its much-needed capital expansion needs. There were two things that motivated my approach. Athi Mate and myself had been discussing a recent report by the Economic Intelligence Unit of The Economist magazine, in which they had polled water utility managers to assess their preparedness to function efficiently into the 2030s. This report had asked these managers of water utilities throughout the world this question. What, if any, are the main barriers to ensuring sufficient clean water supplies to 2030? In the response given by managers of water utilities in the developing world, insufficient capital resources ranked as number one and the factor about low tariffs was not ranked in the top three concerns at all. The second factor that motivated my approach was that I had had a meeting with a new financial secretary of Dominica, a young lady who had just graduated from UWI, and who had informed me that the government of Dominica was no longer willing to guarantee any international loans to the public utilities, and that included the water utility. This approach, I must admit, did capture the attention of the directors present. I began my discourse with the observation that the way we think about water issues significantly affects the way we design the solutions to address them. It also affected the extent to which certain actions, practices, and institutional postures are perceived to be either legitimate or illegitimate, legal or illegal, or within the realm of possibilities or outside of the realm of possibilities. The essence of my approach was the revenue built-up strategy. This was a strategy that contained three sections. The first was the water deficit demand that currently existed in the Eastern Caribbean. Water deficit is defined as a position in which the shortfall in water availability for national consumption is the result of factors beyond the seasonal rainfall fluctuations. Thus, in the Caribbean countries such as Antigua and Barbuda, St. Kitts Nevis, St. Martin, and Anguilla, where this is becoming evident, their governments are being encouraged to develop a mixed strategy of using groundwater 
desalination, and conservation methods in order to meet the total water demand of the local population and an expanding tourism sector. Our objective in CWTC was to supplement their domestic supplies in the first instance by shipping bulk water supplies targeted to address their growing water deficit positions as established in the graph above. The second part of this strategy was that Dominica was the only water surplus country in the Eastern Caribbean. Because of its topography, extensive forest cover, and a history of conservation and forward-looking parks legislation, this small island had found itself with an overabundance of freshwater supplies relative to its small population. Dominica is among the wettest islands in the Eastern Caribbean. It receives on the average between 250 and 380 centimeters of rainfall each year. The mountainous interior produces a rainfall shadow on its western Caribbean coast, where the average rainfall falls below 200 centimeters per year. In contrast, rainfall in the mountainous inland regions which is the source of this water abundance, can reach as high as 700 centimeters per year. Our approach was to capture this opportunity to participate in initial transshipments of bulk water supplies to the short distance markets in the northeastern Caribbean, utilizing tugboats and barges. This pilot project was designed to validate the expectations of management and operations of this solution to the water stress needs of neighboring islands. Once the operational parameters had been established within a Caribbean pilot project, we expected that more countries will see freshwater imports as a viable low-carbon solution to meeting water needs. We will also demonstrate that once the supplies can exceed 28 million gallons per month, significant gains can be made by a shift to a water tanker with a capacity anywhere between 20 and 60 million gallons and be used on a lease system. The transshipment of freshwater supplies in the Caribbean can be demonstrated as a feasible option. Now, what is the size of this water deficit? Let me give you a picture of the extent of this water deficit. The total water deficit of four of the Eastern Caribbean most affected islands, that is Antigua, St. Martin, Anguilla, and St. Lucia, is estimated at 291 million gallons per month. That is right, per month. What is the value proposition being represented here? Well, at a low price of US $28 per thousand gallon, that would represent US $5.7 million per month. We say a low price of $28 per thousand gallon because the market in individual islands is so badly underserved that the potential price spread is much higher. Let us take Anguilla, which is the furthest destination point for our Caribbean transship of bulk water supplies. Anguilla is 195 nautical miles from Dominica. In Anguilla, we have a potential client who is a private sector water bottling company named Aronel. In Anguilla, the price for publicly delivered water is EC $40 or $14.80 US for the use of less than 1,000 gallons per month and EC $60 or US $22.20 for usage up to 3,000 gallons per month. We plan to deliver our water supply at US $19, which is EC $53, which is very competitive. 
Anguilla had had some terrible experiences with desalination water. The fiscal burden on the government to subsidize desalination water to the general public had become overbearing to the extent that in 2014, General Electric folded up and shipped out its desalination water plant, which had a capacity of 900,000 U.S. gallons per day. Because the government of Anguilla was not paying the arrears owed to the desalination company. The price of desalination water is estimated on a comparative basis, that is, by noting the movement in the relationship of the price of oil. In 2001 study in Antigua, the cost of desal water was estimated at EC $48 per thousand gallon, and the price of oil in March 2015 was $23 per barrel. That is a ratio of 1 to 2.08. Now in 2016, with a price of oil at $35 per barrel, the estimated cost of desal at the historic ratio of oil prices to desal water production would be about 73 US dollars per thousand gallon. So, one of the most significant things that our water delivery to Anguilla would do would be to reduce the fiscal burden of subsidizing water by some 27%. Third element of this revenue build-up strategy for Dawasco is the fact that the surface flows in Dominica are very reliable. In 2002, 2003, and 2004, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers conducted the water resources investigations in Dominica, Antigua and Barbuda, and St. Kitts Nevis. This assessment had among its objectives to provide U.S. military planners with accurate information for planning various joint military training exercises and humanitarian civic assistance engineering. Here is what they verified. Of three of the major river basins in Dominica, the country has six. The total water produced was of the magnitude of 253.5 million gallons imperial per day. The Dominica Water Authority, the Wasco, in its own operations, extracted about 20 million gallons per day to satisfy domestic, commercial, and industrial needs. In our discussion with Dominica, they had indicated that they have built and repaired after Tropical Storm Erica in 2015, a dedicated line at the port of Portsmouth. This line, they said, can load 50 million gallons of water every three days. At our projected peak in the first two years of operation, we are estimating about 27 million gallons per month. The prospect of Dominica's water featuring in the global chain of water supply are even more amazing. Our plans to purchase Dawasco water is outlined as follows. We are willing to purchase supplies in annual volumes approximating 272 million gallons in 2017, 368 million gallons in 2018, going up to 480 million gallons in 2019, then 888 million gallons in 2020, and peaking at 1.140 million gallons in 2021. This would amount to a potential earning by the Wasco of US $17.7 million over a projected five-year period. To put this in perspective, gentlemen, we have identified from public announcements from your company 14 water projects proposed and undertaken by the Wasco over the seven-year period 
2011 to 2018, whose total costs do not exceed 17 million US dollars or 46.3 million EC dollars. And this total includes the most recent US $2.8 million in grant from the Caribbean Development Bank, which is aimed at the entire work. That covers designs to improve the portable water system, water treatment facilities, pumping stations, water storage reservoirs, and transmission mains. So this potential that I am presenting to you now would pay for the entire capital budget program for the next seven years within five years. And you would neither have to borrow funds nor try to raise the rate of tariff. Faced with revenues coming from very low tariff structures, which is an outcome of social positioning, and with the state no longer guaranteeing any loans that the WASCO would be able to raise to repair its lines, we are hoping that your board can see opportunities where before they only saw risks. Introducing metering into your water distribution system and adopting new management technologies are all measures of limited results. The revenue raised by this new water trade would now be available to fund a variety of water resource management functions all of which are desperately needed now to achieve the water policy objectives. We would like to highlight the potential of mutual benefits of your participation in our project. These would be the first, to create a business relationship between CWTC and the WASCO, in which the former would be able to fulfill its commitments to clients in the destination markets by ensuring them that we can deliver specified volumes of water at a commercially viable cost and within an established schedule. And the latter would be able to have a reliable buyer for substantial volumes of water produced within the Dawasco system. Secondly, Building a symbiotic relationship that could redound to the growth of both companies in water sales, as well as formulating the basis for a reliable partnership in the Wasco's pursuit of its own capital expansion budget. Our proposal represented here is an accumulated income opportunity for the WASCO of about 157 million EC dollars or US 57 million dollars over a 10 year period. In other words, just the revenues that the WASCO could earn from participating with us in this project would provide your corporation with sufficient income to finance the entire restructuring of its domestic operations. We have already analyzed the options available to the WASCO to develop pricing policies that will successfully manage the demand for water in each of its local markets. The WASCO's astute managers have already recognized the peculiarities in managing these separate markets. The domestic consumer market requires a huge infrastructure cost just to maintain the extensive reach in its delivery system. This is being further exasperated by new settlements on higher elevations, causing the WASCO to add the expense of elevating their water supplies. Most of the WASCO water now uses gravitation to deliver from storage basins which are above the intended consumers. The waterfront market is limited to whenever the cruise ships come into port. At best, this produced an additional sale of approximately 250,000 gallons per season and at EC $10 per thousand gallon. But the pricing of water does not by itself stimulate cruise ship calls. It remains for us to show that it is the regional market that has the attraction for both growth and financial returns. In addition, 
In a workshop on March the 20th and 21st, 2013, your general manager of the WASCO, Mr. Bernard Etinoff, had noted that Dominica needed to address the issue of water losses, and I quote, with a goal to bring in this metric down from the possible 30% to 10 or 15%. The source of such financing, however, until our time, is either grant funding from multilateral agencies to government or, if possible, through your company debt financing. Actually, the regional aspect of this trade had been recognized by management, public officials, and the public in general. Back in April 28, 2010, a poll reported by Dominican News Online had found that 76% of respondents were in favor of Dominica exporting water to other Caribbean countries. We are showing now that this confidential model of ours has the potential for the WASCO to be earning from this project. For every 1,000 gallons we resell, we would pay the WASCO 15 EC dollars, which is the optimum price gazetted. Our model shows that based on the commitment we have received from the Masco, the contract we had signed with RNL in Anguilla, and the demand we know we will be facing in Antigua, the WASCO would have been paid about 810 EC dollars in the first 12 months of operation, the potential earnings for your corporation from this participation in this regional trade would be EC $4.5 million in year two. Let me leave you with one last food for thought. Yarlene Frizzani, who is the Director for Risk Compliance and Training at the Ontario Clean Water Agency in Canada, had once stated this, risk management is extremely important because risk should not be limited to the threats you are facing right now, but also to the opportunities or lack thereof that are being made available. We are happy to present to you this opportunity for cooperation that has the potential to lower the risks of some outcomes and also increase the likelihood of improvements in others. In those of high risks, like insufficient funds for current operation, limitations from the use of obsolete technology, overcoming low tariffs, our project cooperation is able to reduce significantly their likelihood. And in the case of those with current low likelihood, such as expanding market opportunities and financing your capital budget, we will be able to help you to lower the risk and increase their likelihood. Mr. Chairman and board members, thank you very much for your attention.